Hi, everyone. I'm Jody Schwan from SiouxFalls.Business. Welcome to another edition of Talent Thursday. We've got a great conversation for you today. So great, in fact, that we hopped out a little early. So now you've got all afternoon to join us uh, for uh, a great conversation um, about all things uh, related to, to talent as well as public service, uh, which is a, a great angle for us to be taking today. Denise Gazetta over at the Sioux Falls Development Foundation organizes these chats with us. Uh, Denise, thanks for being here and uh, go right ahead and introduce our guest if you can. Absolutely. One of my favorite people, uh, Ethan Beck. And I know, you know how you can always tell the history here because I met Ethan probably about three, four years ago. Absolutely. And since then, whenever I need like to pick me up or advice on recruiting, I go to Ethan. So Ethan Beth, City of Sioux Falls. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us, Ethan. And um, let me actually start. Denise was saying that she has known you uh, in past roles as well. We always like to talk about people's own uh, career trajectories. You've had an interesting one. So uh, maybe tell us a little bit about how you got where you are. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you both for for having me on today. Um, definitely, definitely honored to do so. And I've I've watched previous Talent Thursdays, and I'm like, oh, you know, maybe that could be me someday. And here we are. Wow. So you've arrived. You know, absolutely. Today's the day. <laughs> so, um, you know, a little bit about my my story. I had originally went to University of South Dakota. I'm go Yotes. You know, went, got my undergrad down there. Got my MBA. Um, from the Beacom School of Business, graduated December of 21 with the MBA. Um, I had began my professional career, if you want to put it that way, had started with Avera Health, um, had been in Yankton. You know, it's close enough to Vermilion that the commute wasn't too crazy, but, um, you know, got a lot of really good experience in a, in a smaller rural town here and learned a lot about community, people, relationships, how you need to build those and drive those forward. Um, in the workplace, whether it's private sector, public sector, business professional, whatever it is. So um, I segued that into an internship in workforce planning back in Sioux Falls um, under Pam Hilbert's team here with mm -hmm. Avera. Um, that was a great experience. Got to learn a lot about what happens once you not only get someone to the finish line of hiring, you know, what does onboarding lead, need to look like? What does retention need to look like? But how are we starting to find the right people earlier and earlier on in their educational experience? How are we planting the seed for certain employment types to get people excited to want to get into service, whether it be nursing, education, social work, or in my current role, you know, serving our, our police department or anything public safety or anything city service, um, you know, it's, it's getting people excited for that and, um, you know, really bridging the gap between the sacrifices made to be in that in that sector, but also, um, you know, looking at the, the the fulfillment that comes with it. So I had been in long term care for two and a half years. I was an onboarding coordinator for Avera Majestic Bluffs in Yankton. It is the largest skilled nursing facility in the state. Um, had onboarded, you know, hundreds of employees down there, our CNAs, nurses, everyone in between, and of course, did that during the COVID pandemic. That was. Uh, a, a bountiful amount of learning lessons for me. Um, not only did I really support all of those initiatives and our interviewing process, everything, you know, really trying to find those right folks to care for residents, but ended up taking on a lot of COVID responsibilities. Um, I was absolutely deemed our on-site IT guy. My definition of IT is if it doesn't work, unplug it and shake it a little bit and plug it back in seemingly does okay. So that that only went so far, but that was an incredible experience for me. And that segued into my time as a talent acquisition recruiter for Avera. And that would have been roughly June of 21 to late 22. Um, I had been part of a direct hire program. This is where some of my contact with Denise, you know, came into play more from a professional level and not just meeting right. her as, a, as an intern. Right. Um, but in talent acquisition at Avera, I was absolutely privileged to be given the opportunity to run a program called Direct Hire. Um, Direct Hire was a program in which we removed the hiring managers from the hiring process in order to give them time back in their busy days. Um, and, and from a transformational standpoint, it made a major impact on Tom Bosch's team with Avera pretty quickly, um, pretty swiftly. And I, I just feel incredible at what we were able to accomplish in a six month period. Um, and I believe that that program is still up and running today. Um, and they've they've grown that even further. We had pivoted that into nursing um, and I had been promoted to their lead recruiter. Now, pivoting over to the city, 
Um, you know, this opportunity was floated out there to me. And I, I've got some family connections here at the city, which which made it really easy to want to look this way. Um, the city of Sioux Falls, from an employment standpoint, has has always been in my back pocket. Uh, my mom was in planning Please. when I was eight or nine years old, the planning department up here on second floor, which um, now is civic analytics. I can still envision as like a four foot five, eight year old where my mom's desk was, who was there with her. And, um, you know, I, I remember working with, um, you know, Jane Hannestead, who was my manager for two weeks when I started at the city. Oh. She retired shortly, shortly after I started here. And coincidentally, she had managed my mom when she was here back in 2005, 2006. So Jane, I have to imagine this was just surreal that she got to manage two generations of Becks and was was able to do so even for just a short amount of time. So, and I don't even know how much of it was management as much as was just making sure I got through training and was getting yeah. paid. But, you know, I digress. Um, you know, that is really what led me here. Had a lot of great conversations and have leveraged that experience to... I really think offer some great programming here at the city and offer some recruitment sourcing tactics and, and dynamics for public safety, um, you know, that, that, you know, are very much so needed in this tumultuous environment as we try to find the right people. So thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's the thing Ethan, is it's not abnormal for family members to go work at the city for multiple generations. I think that says a lot about the experience that people have there and the culture yeah. that has been permeated over the years, even though it's a big organization. I mean, if we are talking about it as an employer, this is definitely among our, our larger employers. There are so many options for people. And I think a lot of people don't understand the great variety of ways that you can work for the city. So Ethan is, is dialed in here on public safety. We're going to focus on that for a bit. But I would just tell you, if you uh, really bring any skills that are, are of, you know, um, application to, to various functions of city government, it's worth checking out. And they do a great job of communicating those opportunities. But public safety um, is just a continual uh, hiring need in the city of Sioux Falls. You know, we're growing, we've got turnover, we got people retiring, we're adding um, new opportunities. So talk a little bit about your role, um, Ethan, and the need that you currently see for more applicants to consider those roles in public safety. Absolutely. So in my in my current role, I'm privileged to be a talent acquisition coordinator for the city of Sioux Falls. Um, when I was hired on in November of 22, the sole mission at the time was to make a major impact in the hiring for the police officer position here in the city. Um, not only that, but all of their civilian positions, promotional work, everything in between. And where I think my subject matter expertise has really been able to drive the needle forward is looking outside the box towards recruitment, sourcing opportunities, and looking into avenues of where we can find candidates, find the right people, and, and do it in ways we hadn't before. So um, from a public safety hiring perspective, um, I would say it's probably one of the more intensive hiring processes that anybody's going to find out there, besides maybe high-end military and federal government work. Um, you know, from a, a, dete a detective FBI standpoint. So, you know, with that, a lot of times candidates are with me for two, three, four months or even longer. Um, so it's it's a lot about relationship building. And, and we've tried to make a major impact. And we've, I, I believe, made major strides towards mm -hmm. offering that kind of experience, understanding how much of it goes into not only an investment from us, but in my eyes, most importantly, the investment of the candidate, um, you know, the sacrifices that they are on track to make. Um, you know, I think our team would tell you that it is one of the most noble sacrifices and noble professions that you can jump into. Um, and, and that's going to be police officer work, or maybe it's firefighter work or working for Metro being a 911 operator. Um, you know, it, it really talk about moving the needle forward and making an impact on people day to day. Um, that's that's going to do it. And you know, from my end with talent acquisition, um, nothing fills my cup more than knowing that the people I'm contributing to hiring and people that I may find that we might not have obtained else, uh, you know, otherwise, um, you know, they're protecting me and my family. They're protecting those that might be watching this video, um, us on the call. And and, and that is really just such a, a sensational, um, you know, feeling day to day. So it's it's definitely a challenge. Um, you know, we we continue to try and build partnerships around the community. Coincidentally, today 
Uh, we just launched our, our second year of career cadet applications. So, you know, that's a program that we're trying to grow through Southeast Tech. And um, I, I think we've, we've, we've got one that's starting in June that began the program last year, kicked off the inaugural year of it. So um, we're hopeful to see that continue to come to fruition more and more. But um, it, it's, it's an everyday battle. Every day is something different. I wouldn't trade that for anything. Um, but talent acquisition, too, I, I think it really bridges the gap between sales and human resources in a really unique way. Um, and, and that's, you know, really what does it for me. You know, we have a class, um, I'm doing a story on it, so shameless plug, watch for it. But FIRE's graduating a class of cadets soon that I understand is among the most diverse, certainly in, in recent history. I mean, a lot of different backgrounds. Um, Absolutely. Same thing. We've had such a surge, and, and Denise has also helped us profile some of these folks who are coming here from out of state. They have all kinds of different backgrounds and skills, and they're finding a fit here. You know, so, I mean, if we've got somebody watching this, Who's thinking, yeah, I've considered Sioux Falls, you know, maybe I'm ready to make a move. What what kind of cultures, what kind of experience are they finding as they connect with the city? Absolutely. So, you know, I, I think it's it's really easy to come into an organization and, and on their website, on their advertising, you might see a mission statement, you might see a vision statement and wonder, well, is that reality or is it is it just good for marketing to have that out there? And you know, I think here with the city, we look at contributing our work today to create a better tomorrow. We have departments that are looking 25, 50, and even 100 years out in their planning. You talk about water purification, you talk about the public safety campus, you know, that, that 100 acres that they have out there, only 40 is developed at this time. And that is in part because of the potential and, and likely growth that's gonna come about. And with, you know, Sioux Falls doubling its population the last 30, 35 years, um, I, I think we're in a position where the serve today for a better tomorrow, and then also looking at um, the dynamic in which we are one Sioux Falls. Um, you know, every department works together. Everyone has a hand in on a lot of different processes. Our operational teams, um, you know, serve a variety of groups. And and ultimately, I, I think there's a lot of good work that goes on here. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of our department leaders and and even the mayor's office would tell you that folks go home every day knowing that the service work they do has contributed to the state in which Sioux Falls is currently. You know, you look at almost $2 billion in building permits in 2022. You look at the expansion of the Riverline District, the entertainment opportunities, the continued parks and rec growth, the community relationship that our community has with police and fire. I, mm -hmm. I think it's just, it's incredible. It's really unique. And when you look at everything Sioux Falls has going for it, um, I think our mission, the vision, and you know, some of those belief and uh, beliefs and cultural statements internally. Um, those are those are true statements. It's something that that people carry with them, um, you know, more than just a statement. It's it's how we how we carry ourselves here as, as staff. Yeah, I think what's great to see, Denise, is how this has become a community effort to encourage um, people to pursue public safety occupations. Do you maybe want to share a little bit about what the Development Foundation has done to partner in that regard? Absolutely. And, and it started, I mean, Ethan and I started working together. So just to give you a little background, um, Ethan was one of our first attendees at our Women Workforce Conference, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how I became familiar and met him. Had no idea of his family history because I'm new to this city, right? And I've been welcomed into this city, but that's how we first met. And then going forward with our Career Connections Program, okay, which is to really focus in on that talent that we have here, the talent that resides in high school and helping them with pathing beyond their graduation. And we just had a lot of activity, a lot of interest. And I think it's very, very timely when you see law enforcement with needs, but you see also people with interest. It was all get them on the sites, get them connected to people like Lieutenant Forrester, get them connected and plugged in. And what I've seen is a transformation within these kids what they thought about law enforcement is so different than what they experience, and they're so excited. So I'd say that's the first thing that we've done is we've really plugged in um, to really helping our students uh, understand about these careers here, careers in law enforcement, careers in fire, right? Careers within the city. The second thing we've done is in our partnership is we have said, okay, we are going to help fund 
for some of these cadets going through the program and the PD cadet program, which was launched last year and we were a part of, how do we help people in this process? So yes, STC comes alongside, they do a great job, they have a great team. You then have a great team within the city that kind of brings these candidates along. And then you have great leaders within the organization itself that really speak to the character, the quality, the culture. Um, and, and really that's the power of partnership. So we sponsor and support the PD cadet program. We love this program. Um, you're writing an article right now yeah. on a graduate that's coming out that really kind of resonates with all of us um, because it changes and kind of challenges what we think a lot of us can do. I mean, we talk about you know, when I was back in high school, I didn't think that there was a lot of opportunities for me in law enforcement. We're changing that. We're giving right. people a different yeah. view and kudos to that. I also want to take a brief moment. I want to talk just quickly about culture because you asked about this. The city of Sioux Falls has a great culture, but it does start with the leadership. Okay. you got a very approachable mayor. You got a wonderful, engaged city council. You got a lot of people um, from Mark Cotter to you mentioned Jane. There's there's Mandy Fry. There's so many people there to help you along the, your journey, and they're invested. Um, and these are people that they will take the time to help you. They will take the time to meet you for coffee. That is so incredibly unique within this wonderful city, um, and something that other cities don't have. So we just need to spotlight that. For sure. So, you know, even the thing with public safety hiring and, and not across the board, but in, in many cases is it is a process, as you said, you know, you were yep. with applicants for a while. Um, you can't just necessarily send in a, a resume today and, you know, join the team 30 days later. Um, right. you know, sometimes we have roles like that, but but in a lot of cases you have to prepare for a process. So what is your advice to people who might be considering um, a career, whether it's with police, with fire, with Metro, you know, what should they be uh, prepared to do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I've, I've actually given a lot of thought and, and evaluation to my conversation with folks and, and how we, we navigate them through the process. Um, I, I think the, the biggest thing is that if you if you want it, Take the bull by the horns, continue to prepare yourself to become that subject matter expert, but know that we we believe in you and every single applicant that comes through, we want you to succeed because we not only want to fill those positions and those vacancies to you know check the analytical box, if you will, but we want to do that to be able to serve the city at the highest level possible, to mitigate crime, to serve mental health and the epidemic that that has become to, you know, really just make a difference and impact the lives of so many here and to continue growing those community relationships. Um, you know, I, I think that that's really what I would, I would champion for anyone interested in public safety, whether it's police, whether it's fire, whether it's Metro or anything in between is believe in yourself, make sure that you prepare yourself as much as possible. But to speak the words of our, our esteemed training lieutenant, Jess Speckmeyer, um, you know, ultimately what it comes down to is you have to be willing to fail. You have to be willing to, you know, learn from your mistakes in a profession that is under such a spotlight, that is one where you have to know a lot of different things and be able to rack very quickly to those. Um, but even, even with fire and with Metro, the circumstances that you're in, um, you know, every decision, every second counts, as they put it. Um, yeah. But if if someone is up for the challenge and they have a servant heart, they know that public service is where they need to be. You know, I think the biggest uh, the the biggest question is, you know, will will someone answer the call? And if they do, you know, we're we're going to believe in them. We're going to usher them into the process and and really with open arms try to get them to the finish line. So, yeah, it's a very supportive environment. I think. Uh, do you yeah. have any? openings currently um, that you wanted to discuss or do you want to talk about timelines uh, for the next hiring classes? Yeah, I can I can float that out super quick. So for police officer, um, where I think we are relatively unique in the region is we do accept applications year round. Um, we typically align our hiring classes with the law enforcement training divisions academies. Um, so we we typically hire for February of each year, November of each year, and then a rolling target sometime in the summer. Now, the incredible thing about us having the public safety campus now 
is depending on class size and some other factors, we will be able to host classes at the public safety campus from an academy perspective, which is going to offer a genuinely second to none experience in the greater Great Plains region. Um, and, and not even saying that as a, as a hyperbole, it, it really is a one of a kind campus in this in this space. So um, we're currently accepting apps and we're looking towards interviews for November's class. Um, we'll likely have a February of 25 as well, but we haven't confirmed any of next year's dates yet. Um, I think more importantly, you know, we, we just wrapped up that hiring cycle for police for June, um, but FIRE, they opened their applications on April 29th. I believe they're accepting apps for about three weeks um, and they'll be doing interviews in, in mid-June for those that are selected. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it'll be the second hiring class for FIRE that gets to um, partake and work their training out at the PSC also. Um, so now is the right time to pursue those guys. They've got an incredible leadership team um, and group that'll take care of them. And then with Metro, um, the city, you know, uh, city acquired Metro operations January 1st. They became part of the family here. And, um, you know, we, we launched their application portal here a few weeks back. Um, so Metro is actively accepting applications for an August 19th class. We'll have an October class as well and, and potentially more to come there. But, um, you know, as I've, I've started to dive into things with Metro more too, um, they've got an awesome leadership group and their facility. I mean, it'll make you want to run through a brick wall when you go check it out. Yeah. And Nina, Nina, their therapy dog is, <laughs> is about as amazing of a poodle as they come. So um, that would be my shameless plug, but yeah. we've got a lot of good opportunities going on with uh, public safety right now. Yeah. It's a next level facility, Denise. I don't know if you've been out there, but I mean, that public safety training campus is, it, it's such a differentiator and the importance of investing in training. You know, we talk about that all the time. They have done that in a big way here. They really have, and and the the people that work there are incredible as well. I mean, Chad Quisnell um, was so gracious, allowed a lot of our students to come through. Um, again, right. we do so much career exploration because we are a growing, diverse community of people that don't necessarily know what's out there for employment. And then if they can think about the employment, then you, they have to think, well, how am I going to get there? How am I going to be prepared for that? And having that state of art, just first class training facility is just fantastic. Yeah. So. Well, Ethan, we are lucky that you are in public service. You could be doing a lot of things. So thank you for your work. Thank <laughs> you for bringing your skills to what you do. And um, if you are out there listening and considering our role um, within city government, within county government, um, we need you too. We need your skills. And uh, it's great that the community is, is partnering in a way to try and bring that forward even more. So Ethan, thank you. If uh, you want to get connected to the city, they make it very easy. Sufalls.org. Uh, you'll find it all from there. Denise, any closing thoughts from you? No, just thank you both. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, enjoy the weekend, everybody. We will be back next week. She's already got it scheduled. Watch for us next Talent Thursday. Cool. Thanks for watching. We'll be back on time. Incredible. Next week. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you.